Welcome to the 196th episode of News Dump, where we run through the hottest topics in the Lewis County news scene and discuss. I'm local man Aaron Vantile, joined by Chronicle Executive Editor Eric Schwartz and Chronicle photojournalist Cody Christian. And we're joined in spirit by sponsors Summit Funding, Shayless Outfitters, and The Roof Doctor. How are you both today? Uh, wonderful. Been watching the Olympics much? Yeah, you're you, you. Every time I see you, you're just going on and on about yeah. Well, you know, sport. When you're an athlete, the Olympics hit differently, Aaron. And I don't expect you to understand that, but uh, yeah, you know, when you're yeah. someone, when you're someone like me or even Cody, uh, the Olympics are a little more fun to watch. Yeah, I just watched a bunch of swimmers get third last night. I was oh, not no. impressed. Yeah, <laughs> losers. <laughs> they still reached. The, they, they, they're on the. They're on the podium. What, okay. what Olympic sport do you guys think you would best be able to compete in? Uh, probably a women's sport of some sort. <laughs> Maybe yeah. women's rugby. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I've seen some clips of the USA oh, women's know, rugby team. I'm, I know. They're kind of scary. They did win a bronze medal, and yeah, they were bruising. I enjoyed that. That's been my favorite sport of this Olympics. I'm thus sure far. you would compete. With, oh, don't tackle me. Oh. Uh, that and the guy that did, he only does the pummel horse. Did mm. you guys see that guy for Team USA last night? Yeah, the glasses. Looking like Harry Potter, and then he just like takes the glasses off and goes and does his thing, and yeah, they won. <laughs> bronze medal as well lots of bronzes i know yeah high medal bronze count not standard. a lot of golds yeah well you know they always make up for it on the back half those, we those haven't even got to the running events yet. dirty so. french perverts cleaning our <laughs> clocks in the gold medal category yeah those french perverts yeah i saw that. their opening Gaudy ceremonies show. disgusting <laughs> <It> really was <laughs> i couldn't believe it who would have thought the french into weird i know things bunch of freaks yeah i'll have to get back to you on that best event i think about that one is there there's no there's no swinging in the summer olympics is there I wouldn't win. <laughs> <laughs> Not that good. To show I saw you. some judo. You could do that. Some fencing. Do fencing. The fencing. Fence. I'm still like confused why they have like the cable on their back to like jerk them back. I guess at some point. I don't understand I don't, what don't that's all fencing. about. I saw there was a woman who's seven months pregnant doing fencing. Yeah, she won a medal. I'm pretty sure. I was going to say maybe you could beat her, but probably not. No, I don't think so. Yeah, seven months pregnant. That's kind of two versus one though. Yeah. Um, we did another parade on Saturday. Mm-hmm. It went pretty well. It's I know Oregon Trail Days. That was our third, fourth year out there. Mm-hmm. Good show, as always. Shout out the lady across from us in the I Heart Sluts t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> so I heard the... There Almost was took a, her picture to put in the paper, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a good shirt. She was a family woman, too. Had her kids there with her. Yeah. That, was, that was great. <laughs> there was a like a TV crew kind of next to us doing some kind of broadcast, and I heard yeah, at one point... Strange. One of them whispered, like, hey, there's a woman in a shirt on the other side of the road that maybe we want to maybe not catch on film. Yeah, that was Thurston County Community Media, I believe, the big time. Yeah, they were. Uh, they noticed the lady in the shirt as well. Yeah, that was good. Cody, you shot that, and you remarked that it was better than Summerfest, and I want to know why you hate the Centralia Downtown Association. I do not hate this. Centralia Top five Downtown reasons you hate the Centralia Downtown Association. I don't hate the Centralia Downtown Association. You're putting words in my mouth. <laughs> It's a bit. It I, what I did say is that the Tanana Parade is better than the Summerfest Parade. Okay. Would you like me to explain that? Yeah, I do. Well, for one, motorcycle stunt team to start it off. Mm -hmm. There's automatic bonus points right there. Mm -hmm. It yeah. was about twice as long. There was confetti at one point. Mm -hmm. Lots of candy being thrown. I don't recall a lot of candy at the Centralia Parade. Well, that's banned in Centralia. At least it was last time I checked. Really? Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? No, they passed an ordinance at one point. There's still candy that gets handed out, but as yeah, far as that's costing why, it, okay, you're not that supposed sense. to really do that anymore. So, as a young child, it is obviously <laughs> much more entertaining to attend a parade where candy is flying through the air and you have to fight the other children for it, right? <laughs> yeah. How was the call, though? I mean, how did we do? The call, the call was great nine to both ten. times. Yeah. Uh, eight, seven. Eight, seven. Oh, very that's specific. Very, it's harsh. I'm sorry. It was a good parade, though. The, yeah. I liked the three-on-three -three basketball action and the dunk contest. You got some great photos from the dunk contest. Those looked like they were big hits. There was a ton of people over at basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess a lot of them were Yelm guys. The NVN picked up a bunch of your photos and ran them of just... I think the winner was from Yelm. Yeah, he's Trip a Yelm graduate. I saw. I ran into Luke Salmi at the dunk contest, and he was telling me that the guy that won both the 8-foot and 10-foot dunk contest, he goes at UW. He's like a Pac-12 champion uh, triple jumper or oh, high jumper helps. or something like that. So yeah, wasn't he on an eight imagine. foot hoop too? There was an eight foot to an eight foot dunk contest, which he won, and then he won the ten foot dunk contest too. Yeah. So he won right. both of them. So good for him. That absolves him of any criticism you were going to give of the eight foot, <laughs> hoop, <laughs> which you couldn't like, dunk on an eight foot hoop. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, in my younger days, probably. Yeah. I can throw. It, I can throw down on eight feet. You think so? Mm -hmm. Can you throw down at ten feet? No, I can't jump over a child and take the ball that he's holding above his head between my legs and dunk it like a. 
this gentleman did. But well, if you ever want to borrow my children and try, you are <laughs> welcome to. I've got to three know. of them, so one or two to spare. Okay, on a good day, I can throw it off the backboard and catch it. Okay, and eight, dunk uh, it or just feet. catch it on eight feet. Oh. <laughs> dunk it, man. All right, not on ten feet. Maybe one day, you know. Uh, also of note, Cody and I played in the Chamber of Commerce golf tournament on Friday. Our team won. No, they didn't. First place. First place. Well, first place went to the Riverside golf team. Talk about home field advantage. Oh, yeah, that is helpful. Yeah. Good we, time, though. That's, we had a lovely time. Mm-hmm. We did beat the Silver Agency. Yeah. Ooh, that's pretty our, good. Soundly. Our rival. Who was on the Silver Agency team? Chad, Franklin. Chad, Franklin, Kyle, and Graham. Oh, okay. That's actually not a horrible lineup. No. I honestly thought it was better than our lineup going into it, but underdogs prevailed. You know what? We just had more team spirit. We also had Mr. Austin DeBolt, who can hit the ball about 500 yards. Yeah, he can smash him. <laughs> he can hit it far. He was helpful. Uh, so that, <laughs> that gives you a nice little leg cut. <laughs> you guys ready for news or any other preambles? Mm-mm. I actually don't have a lot of news on the news items list. We're, this is our big uh, <laughs> election preview. Yeah, it's not going to be that insightful because I didn't no. prepare. I actually don't have any insight into any of these races, but I've just got them listed out, so we're going to hash them out. But yeah. before that, the most important race we're covering in the near future, Southwest yeah. Washington Fair, Little Miss Friendly finalists announced. Yeah, we got those yesterday. I was super excited to see that. So the finalists are Justice Barton of Chehalis, Avery Butler of Chehalis, Avery Mordick of Chehalis, Kimber Searle of Chehalis and Hadley Westover of Morton. So it's just Little Miss Chehalis. I uh, don't sleep on uh, Miss Little Morton. Miss Westover there. Okay. Okay. Um, I believe that's the granddaughter of Tony Gillespie, Morton White Pass basketball coach. You won two state titles. There's some royalty in there. Okay. Uh, you know, I've, I'm a bit of a historian of Little Miss Friendly. And you are. I think my <laughs> pick here, I think I'm going with Searle. That's going to be my my guess. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I got no inside information. It's kind of just a gut feeling. Gut you know? feeling. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think that's going to be your Little Miss Friendly this year. Uh, Clara Hansen, current Little Miss Friendly. What a rain. Great rain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, She's the top 50 flawless. Little Miss Friendly. May she live forever. <laughs> <laughs> How many Little Miss Friendlies have there been? May her reign go forever. I think it's been since 1968 that they've done it. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Great. Uh, I think we all know Bailey Peters, the greatest Little Miss Friendly, went on to be Miss Lewis County. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, looking forward to that. It'll be opening night of the fair on Tuesday. We're working on our fair guide right now that goes to press on that, Friday and then will be in the paper next week. Tuesday, August 13th. Now, do they do anything between now and then, like go campaign or... Uh, there's like a picnic that we usually go for the Little Miss Friendlies. Um, they did the judging over the weekend. I think Miss Lewis County and Miss Lewis County's teen were two of the judges I mm-hmm. saw online. Um, and no, I don't know how much <laughs> campaigning is done. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they'll announce the winner at that Tuesday fair and we'll be there as we always are with full coverage. Cody who's, will be there. Who's got the call on covering it this year? Uh, man, who was it that was covering it this year? I cannot... I cannot remember. Zach. You said Zach. <laughs> Zach uh, Martin, our sports reporter, will be covering the KELA KMNT diaper derby on Thursday of the fair. Um, we I'd used love to, to shoot that. We used to draw straws. You might be able to. We used to draw straws for um, who covered Little Miss Friendly, but over the past couple of years, we've always had a volunteer. I think we should have both photographers for Little Miss Friendly. Well, that's yeah, a big that's, deal. that's a given. We need to have every angle a lot of covered, coverage. someone short range, someone long range. Um, yeah, you got to be on your toes for that. I'll climb a barn, find a vantage point, get the big lens. Yes, do that. <laughs> yeah, Cody, yeah, given our current political climate. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you should definitely be on a roof, a slo- <laughs> sloped roof. <laughs> Slightly sloped. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's okay, the building was checked. All right. It's election season. We have an election coming up on Tuesday, August 6th. I have taken everything off the ballot and thrown it right down here. These are just the races with actual people in them. Mm-hmm. Are there races the, that don't have people in them? Well, there's the... Or fake people. Levies and whatnot. Oh, sure, sure. I didn't put those on there. <laughs> we should vote for the Riverside Fire Authority levy and the Packwood levy. Sure. And the other know. one is just kind of... Well, what's the other one? Napa Vine. Napa Vine. Just yeah, five. Napa Vine's the other one. That they've been trying to get that yeah, going for a like while. Napa Vine, they've got to answer some questions if they want. That is what the residents said at the last meeting that we covered. Have they answered the questions? Uh, I don't think the residents thought so at the last meeting, but oh. uh, Greg Peterson's in charge there again on an interim basis, and we have great history with him. Yeah, um, no qualms with Greg Peterson, but 
Yeah, you know, no, the, it's it's been a the bit board of a there wreck. needs to provide a little information. Anyway, we're getting into the rates. These are coming in the order they appear on the sample ballot provided by the auditor's office. U.S. Senator, your candidates: Mel Rom, Raul Garcia, David Tilton, Maria Cantwell, Chuck Jackson, Isaac Holk, Henry Clay Dennison, who is a socialist. socialist. Yeah, three names. He's got one for everyone. Scott Nazarino. Nazarino is a cool last name. Uh, Pale Lawrence Geisick, Thor Amundsen, strong name for the independent, and a good space guy. Good space guys there every year. He always runs for something. It's, it's a marketing thing, I believe. Is it? I think so. Mm. Uh, Maria Cantwell is the incumbent, right? Mm-hmm. Raul Garcia would be the lead Republican, I believe. All right. I, you know, I feel pretty secure that Cantwell is probably going to run away with this one again. Yeah, the polls pretty much tell you the same thing. Uh, man, good space guy has his own Wikipedia page. Well, he's been running for office for like 20 years. He's 85 years old. Too old. <laughs> he fits right in in our <laughs> current political climate. The one thing that disqualifies him in this race is he's too old, is what you're saying. All right. Next up, District 3 United States Representative. Your candidates, Leslie Llewellyn, Joe Kent, John Sally Roman, who is an independent, and then Marie Clusencamp Perez, the independent who has made... Has she made a splash? Is it? Can we say she's made a splash? Yeah, I don't. Independent. The John. I don't know anything about John Sally Ro- Roman. He's the independent. Uh, are you talking about the other Republican, Leslie Llewellyn? No, I'm talking about MGP. Oh, MGP. Yeah. Well, her. I, I would say she has uh, exceeded expectations, maybe a little bit. I mean, she's definitely been a different kind of candidate. Um, we had a story <laughs> that raised the ire of some other people that were also endorsed, but the Farm Bureau, the State Farm Bureau, endorsed her. It was the only federal-level uh, Democrat, so we thought made it a little more extra newsworthy. Um, in that race, she's been pretty pretty moderate, I would say. Um, mm-hmm. She was one of a few Democrats to sign on to that legislation criticizing Biden and Harris for their border action. She's the only Washington Democrat who has not endorsed Kamala Harris for president. Um, well, it's because she doesn't like women. Yeah, she's cutting her own path, I guess. Joe Kent is on the front of today's edition of the Chronicle. He oh. got the endorsement of Donald Trump for a second straight election cycle. And then Leslie Llewellyn is the other Republican who has kind of charted her entire campaign as Joe Kent can't get elected, won't get elected. Um, you should choose me because I'm a Republican. She's also been critical of Marie Gluson Comp Perez um, on the border and many other things. Um, but she's a, let's see, a Camus, Camus City Councilor. Mm. So, yeah, I, those three would be the, the top vote getters with, I'm assuming, Kent and Gluson Camp Perez moving on, but we will see. All right. Governor. There's a total of 28 people on the ballot for governor. I didn't want to read them all, so I threw out four that I felt were probably the strongest contenders. How astute. Mark Mullet. Mm-hmm. It's mullet time, according to several signs I've seen around town. Oh, yeah. Bob Ferguson? I know you hate him, but have you ever heard of him? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> I know of several Bob Fergusons. Dave Reichert, who I believe you have a Dave Reichert statue in your front I yard. I do not. You're I always not. talking about it, preaching. I'd never once even voiced support for Constantly. Dave Reichert. Right. Just yesterday, you were like, you know, he caught the Green River Killer. I mean, you were the one that's like parading around this theory that Dave Reichert himself is the Green River Killer because you <laughs> saw a documentary on YouTube and now you're a semi bird fan I for the duration just, of the campaign. I actually just read comments on a Reddit thread about a YouTube documentary. <laughs> sure. And then semi bird. Um, who do you think moves on, Reichert or Bird? No, it'll be, I, my guess is Reichert and Ferguson. Oh, let me tell you, there's a letter writer that does not agree with your opinion. Oh, there's many letter writers that don't agree. Semi Bird, in fact, doesn't agree. Eric Rosane over there at the Tri-City Herald, former Chronicle guy, had a story on how the polls are a load of crap, according to Semi Bird, because he's polling it on the high end, 10%, anywhere from 8 to 11, I guess. Yeah. Um, and Reichert's right in the mid-20s, and then Ferguson seems to be the, really no question that he'll be moving on. Mm-hmm. But I guess we shall see. Yeah, we sure shall. I know you're a big semi guy, though. I, you know, he's just the guy lost a gun. What's not to like? <laughs> he speaks to you. I know. <laughs> you found it, or it was found. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody found it. It was turned in. Lieutenant Governor Denny Heck. Uh, I didn't even list any of the other ones. I can't remember if anybody else is running, but this is kind of like the backup quarterback on an NFL roster. Like you just see, you kind of like to see the name, but never expect much if they're called into action. 
but you think maybe there's greatness there, but you're not really sure. They're just kind of a mystery. You don't know uh, what they do. Oh, I'm a Denny Heck fan. He was the second district guy out in the Yelm area. I spent some time at the NVN. He's also uh, a constant attendee at the newspaper day up at the state legislature. And he spoke to me with his just description of Washington, D.C. is just a cesspool he will never go back to. Mm-hmm. It's horrible. And he does not mince words on that. Um, and he's a big guy on, you know, having just some politeness and politics and getting away from all this um, poisonous rhetoric and whatnot. All right. Like Denny. Secretary of State, Steve Hobbs, Democrat, Dale Whitaker, Republican. Strong feelings either way. Do you feel like elections are broken? Uh, no, I don't. I Fraud don't a big issue? All. Nope. I don't think that that's a thing. Have you stopped all. any steals lately, sir? I, I have not stopped a single <laughs> steal because I don't think that there's a steal to be stopped. We've had, ooh, I want to say, two or three cases of voter fraud over the last few years. And go on. Not an expert, and I don't know what anyone's political leanings are, but it's pretty easy after someone's charged to go check out their social media. They weren't uh, they weren't Biden bros. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Um, right. No, full full faith in the elections, and yeah, very important position. Wouldn't want anyone in that position that uh, sows that kind of BS. To be honest. All right. Next up, State Treasurer Mike Poliziotti. Poliziotti. Pelicotti. Pelicotti, the Democrat, current office holder, and then Sharon Hanick, the Republican. Mm-hmm. Poliziotti. Pelicotti. Seems like he's doing Pelicotti. Seems like it's it look. It's a confusing looking last name. Yeah, well, he visited the Chronicle, I want to say, last year, the year before that, to talk about a program. It was a program helping rural fire departments get their things. I don't know anything about Sharon Hannick. Yeah. Pelicotti seems like he's doing fine. I don't think the state's like running out of money or anything. Do we even need a state treasurer? Hey, would you want to let AI do it? Uh, I could probably do just fine. You? <laughs> <laughs> no, I said it, it would probably do just fine. Uh, yeah. You'd probably have AI do it. It's cool. Well, like Cody, you know, there's some overlap there. How much? Uh, how, I mean, do we really need a treasure? I mean, you probably want one. I guess. What do they do? They handle the investments of the state's funds and things like that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. Attorney General, Pete Serrano, Republican, Nick Brown, Democrat, Monka Dingra, Democrat. Did I butcher that last one? I don't think so. The only thing I've really read about this is Monka Dingra claimed she was working for the King County Prosecutor's Office, and then they came out with a statement. It's like, no, no, she's not. I know, and then she said that she was on a hiatus, and they were like, no, no, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> and then she left it on her website, apparently. Yeah. That, was a, that was a whole thing. That's the only thing you know in the entire AG's race. That's not great for Manka Dingra. No, I like. I kind of like Nick Brown. I like the cut of his jib. Uh, he was the U.S. Attorney, I believe, before this, or maybe is currently. I don't know. Uh, yeah, is he front runner. I would say so. I've seen the most commercials from him. Commissioner of Public Lands. I know this one's near and dear to your heart. Alan Lebovitz, Jamie Herrera Butler, Dave Up the Grove, Sue Kuehl Peterson. Patrick DePoe, Jerry Anderson, Kevin Vandewig. I've seen Kevin Vandewig, Dave Up the Grove, and Jamie Herrera Butler signs probably more than anything else. Mm-hmm. I saw I a Dave say, Up the Grove commercial the other day. I was shocked by that name. Yeah, it's a it's a good name. It's perfect for public lands commissioner. Yeah, more like Dave. Don't fuck up the Grove. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any thoughts there? No, no, not really. Uh, back to the congressional race, though. Uh, Leslie Llewellyn was beating up, uh, who was he beating up? Joe, Joe Kent, which is funny to me. She was uh, criticizing Joe Kent because he endorsed Jamie Herrera Butler, who was once his sworn enemy for the congressional race. I recall. But she was attacking him with that, you know. How could he? Yeah. Well, who would, who would have thought that such a thing could happen in the current state of politics? <laughs> it was still a weird endorsement. It was submitted through our Chronicle News submission portal. <laughs> I actually thought it was a joke when I first got it months ago, and then one of his campaign folks called and was like, well, you got to run that or not? <laughs> okay, fine, we'll run it. Superintendent of Public Instruction, Reed Saris, Chris Reichdahl, John Patteron Blair, David Olson. Chris Reichdahl is the incumbent. He's been in there for eight, ten years maybe. Mm-hmm. David probably... Olson, the only one to visit Lewis County so far. Oh, what did he have to say? Uh, I don't, I don't recall. I think he was, I think he was the one that was out in Mossy Rock recently, and I know for sure he was out in Adna for a Reichert appearance. Oh, okay, okay. I yeah, Reichdahl's probably the front runner, but you know, we shall see. Insurance commissioner, no thoughts. 
I abstain. Yeah, you can't talk about that, can you? I mean, I could. I don't. I don't know any of the it, candidates too cowardly. all that well. Too cowardly. Um, yeah, it's an important position, and I'm sure the voters will select the best candidate. Mm, Creedler is longtime insurance commissioner, and he is he's retiring. He is yes, he's not retiring or not running for re-election. He's been in office since 2000. He's mm-hmm. the longest serving elected official in Washington State. Speaking of offices, we could probably do without. Am I right? <laughs> Are you talking about your office, my man? <laughs> insurance the paper. commissioner. Are you talking about the AI taking over for the treasurer? AI can lay out a paper. All I want to know is why the insurance commissioner took away the insurance from those fire victims over I, in East Washington. I read about it in the spokesman <laughs> review, and ever since then, I've been very upset with the insurance commissioner's office. The spokesman review did not respond to <laughs> our response for comments. Well, you had your chance. I guess you so. It. Yeah. Legislative District 19 State Senator, your candidates, Jeff Wilson and Andy Day. Speaking of candidates, it's losing guns. Jeff Wilson found a gun in yeah. his own bag on an airplane. He turned it in. People he did what he that. was supposed to do. As he said, I, white privilege doesn't exist over there, Aaron. He, <laughs> That's what he said. did say that. Uh, what's Andy Day's deal? Do we know anything I about? I don't. Okay. We'll have coverage. We've kind of been focusing on the races uh, with primary implications um but no i don't have that all right legislative district 19 state rep position one jim walsh and mike coverdale sounded a lot like him been working on that i have yeah Good. i go outside and shout at teenagers uh those two will presumably both move on <laughs> unless the dim steal another election mm-hmm. box out jim walsh Legislative District 19, State Rep. Position 2, Terry Carlson, Democrat, Joel McIntyre, Republican, and Justin Franks, Libertarian. McIntyre has held the seat. He's been popular on Twitter where he likes to uh, have some takes that some people find offensive. I don't know. Is uh, We have some like cloned accounts, too. I remember our reporter, Isabel, having a mix-up with a Joel McIntyre handle that wasn't necessarily Joel McIntyre. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, it wasn't Joel McIntyre, wink, wink. Yeah, I don't know about the wink, wink, but the first part sounded right. <laughs> uh, I would assume Carlson and McIntyre will move on here. I don't know much about Justin Franks. Libertarian. Legislative District 20 State Senator John Braun running unopposed. Probably because he's taking up so much territory on your opinion page. Oh, boy. Probably just not just letting anybody else in. People are probably just scared of him, run against him. Yeah, he's the Senate minority leader, so. Yeah, he is. Legislative District 20 State Rep Position 1, Melvin Keolani Apana, Culture Republican Party, and Peter Abarno. What is the Culture Republican Party? We still don't know yet. You can kind of throw whatever party you want in there. I think you remember um, the late East Lewis County resident who was a... uh, Pete Crabb. Yeah, Pete Crabb was the Stop the Steal Party, but it was just to be ironic. (laughs) It got ruled. (laughs) Yeah, that guy was cool. I assume they'll both move on. Uh, Ed Orcutt in Legislative District 20, State Rep Position 2. No competition there. Supreme Court Justice Position 2. Todd Bloom, Sal Mungia, David Shelby, and Dave Larson. I don't know who is. Dave Larson was out in Adna for that same thing, wasn't he? Yeah, and that might have been who I was thinking of there. That's, I think, kind of the conservative choice. Running or finding a lot of information on Supreme Court candidates is not easy. Well, they should be keeping their head down. You know? And there's not an open position very often because a lot of times a justice will just retire and get appointed by the governor. And, yeah. Uh, so it's kind of an odd thing, but yeah. Ah, on to the local races. County Commissioner, District 1. Peter Lamont, Republican. Damian Bean, Democrat. Sean Swope, incumbent Republican. Thoughts? <laughs> I know you got thoughts. Uh, I don't know how that's going to go. Uh, Peter L- Lamont is a elected Port of Centralia commissioner. People know who he is. John Swope's the incumbent. He's got a following. Damian Bean's a Democrat, the only Democrat in the race. So you have to think maybe Damian has a good chance to move on as that second candidate. Um, so I pretty much assume Sean's going to move on. And I don't know between Damian and Peter who's going to get that number two slot. It, if Swope doesn't get 50% in the primary, I think he should be very worried, but I think he will. Yeah. I, I, Despite the fact I that he is objectively too. bad at his job. <laughs> in your opinion, he's <laughs> bad at his job. I think it's, a, it's not not clear. <laughs> what has he done well? I'm not shilling for anyone, but I'm not going to criticize them either. All right. Well, 
That's your opinion, man. Yeah, and it's like your opinion, bro. <laughs> Based on facts. Just got broad. <laughs> County Commissioner District 2, Lindsay Raymond Pollock and Christina Riley are both running. Pollock is the incumbent, and they will both move on. This one is more interesting. PUD Commissioner. Jelona Spear, Dave Finn, Angie Brown, Jerry Lord, Julie Bamelli Poe. Who you got? Who's moving on? I don't know. It's a it's an open race, and we have a story coming on this race from Mitchell later this week. But yeah, no, you're right. It's a it's a good race. We've definitely got the most letters for Dave Fenn. I think we've had four or five letters. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spear, Jelona Spear wrote a letter introducing herself and asking for support. Jerry Lord, as we know, is the former Chehalis City Councilor. Owner of MK Store, Julie Balmelly Powell has run for several offices. I believe she was on the Flood Authority at one point. Most recently ran for school board against uh, Jay Vanderstoop. And Anthony Mixer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so that should be a fun race. I'm looking forward to reading Mitchell's story on it. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, Dave Fenn got the endorsement from the two incumbent PUD commissioners and a former PUD commissioner. Um, they all signed on to a letter together, or manager, I should say, Dave Muller. Um, endorsed him as well so we'll see uh, i think dave will probably move on uh i don't know you know dave else. right you know dave fan i kind of i was telling the staff in our news meeting earlier when we were talking about the pd commissioner race that dave fan is very reliable when it comes to letting us know when we've screwed something up mm-hmm. he, will, he will he will tell you exactly what you've done wrong right but he's nice about it i, I can put up with that yeah. especially since he's right you know Sorry, mm-hmm. that wasn't a Canada goose. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different kind of goose. Well, he's never been wrong. Just ask him. Uh, well, he's got the support of the incumbent, so we'll see. Yeah, that'll be an interesting race to see who else uh, or who moves on. Any other races I'm forgetting? I I don't know. We got through all of them. It takes more too hard. There's hot. some Thurston County Commissioner races um, and a few others. But yeah, you Wayne, got, Wayne running? Yeah, yeah, he's on the ballot. I mean, we for, don't get to vote on that. He's on the ballot for a full term. Yeah. Um, Because he won for a single year because they created those new districts or whatever. So Mm -hmm. he was in the Oregon Trail Days Parade. We've seen him. Yeah, he was there. All right, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back with uh, segments and stuff. Hi, this is Jeff and Julie from Fairway Lanes. Jeff and I met Jacek of Summit Funding at our bowling center, so when we fell in love with this community and it was time to relocate, we knew we would be calling Summit Funding. They understand that everyone has a unique situation when buying a home. He had already helped two of our employees get into their own homes. The Summit Funding team exceeded our expectations. It was a seamless experience with great communication from his whole team. Thank you to Summit Funding for making our buying experience special and memorable. All right, we're back. It's time for Tales from the Takes page, the first of our segments. And first up, we've got a letter to the editor. Commissioner Swope is a vocal advocate for our freedoms. This is a letter about that time that Sean Swope personally saved the fair and nobody was harmed in the least. As a result, everything went exactly according to plan. And then everybody stood up and clapped. When did Sean Swope save the fair? Anyway. No, there was an effort to (laughs) cancel the fair during COVID and he was among the people that didn't want to cancel the fair. See. Aaron does not understand a personal viewpoint that is anything other than, yes, sir, I'll take the mask and 10 jabs. So oh, anything okay. that's see. like outside of that is outrageous to him. Right. And he uh-huh. assumes it's outrageous to everyone else, even though here in Lewis County, I would say the opposite is true. I Some base my takes just... on science, <laughs> sir. <laughs> just you base sir. yours on feelings and the propaganda you spew on your own opinion your pages. Your brain has been addled by those 15 jabs that you got. That's so many... <laughs> So many jabs. I'm bringing a magnet to the next podcast, Aaron. We're going to test you. Uh, you go right ahead. Stick uh, right to that you look at me who has had more jabs than Schwartz and decide who is a picture of health and who is not. <laughs> I think we've already gone over the <laughs> athleticism here. Anyway. I walked a mile the other day, Aaron. A mile. You oh, did? Beat that, Aaron. Wow. Did you? I'm just joking. I drove. Did, was it because you left your Zins a half mile from the office? <laughs> yeah, I, I would run if that were the case. Next item, um, Brian Mickey's got a column, a new home for homeless mothers opens in Centralia. It's a good story. Uh, Aaron told me I should have a take on this story, and my take is that mothers should not be homeless. It's a good take. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this column was by far the most p- popular piece of content that the Chronicle put out in the last week, by the way. This is about the Lewis County Maternity House. They've got their first resident, and yeah, it looks good. 
It's a project Vicky by Judd. Cooks Hill Community Church, which I know really doesn't jive with your belief that churches do nothing of, of merit. I know you I hate churches. That, I don't have that belief at all. You hate God. Churches are great. I just think they should stand apart. He does. <laughs> I, do, I do not. He hates, uh, hates God and loves his jabs, man. I, uh, you know what? <laughs> what's, he, what's he doing here? You, all he wants is Moderna to be his personal Lord and Savior. That's right. I can't wait until the rapture comes and I can just flip you guys the bird and walk backwards into hell. Probably pray to fight. That's not every even night. how it works, man. You, you can have seven years of tribulation after that. I mean, you don't oh, get, God, get to go straight go. to hell. You wish you could. But. Oh, Pastor Schwartz over here. <laughs> Uh, anyway, anyway. <laughs> the Eternity House, objectively good. Yeah, it was good. It's $250 a month for the residents to pay, to stay there. And then I think they said they can stay there for up to two years so that wow. we can have the baby and be able to raise the baby for a little while. I think that's great. Cody, if you donate one month uh, rent to the uh, Lewis County, wait, what's it called? Lewis Maternity County House? I will, I will match. You'll match? Yeah. Okay. I'll consider. He's okay. not committing. <laughs> it's definitely not doing it. You can go to lcmaternity.org to learn how to uh, make donations. They're accepting bus passes, tickets, arts and crafts, new water bottles, maternity clothing, infant toys, financial donations. That's where you come in, Cody. Yeah. Well, uh, well if I donate some water bottles, will you match that too, Aaron? No. No? <laughs> water bottle? Why, why do you have water bottles? This guy hates mothers. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold. You wouldn't want them to be hydrated, do you? <laughs> you <want> to- <laughs> I don't think this is Try true. Try dehydrated babies. Oh, they've got an Amazon wish list. Oh, it's on there. Cody, you can afford this. There's a $10 uh, pack of sheets they need. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Another letter to the editor. This one. Semi-bird is a choice of the people, not Reichert. This letter writer says, Reichert will not debate him because he knows Semi is a better educated opponent who would run circles around him. According to the polling prediction site 538.com, a bird is pulling at 10% while Reichert is pulling at 28%. What a take. But those polls are garbage, semi bird said as much yesterday. It's true. Those polls don't take into account homes with more than two televisions <laughs> exactly. and things of that nature. <laughs> it's garbage, man. Yeah, Bird himself said the polls are incorrect. Who is he to tell a lie? What else is on the opinion page? Oh, there's a bunch of letters. I already mentioned the, the day Fen letters. Um... And then you already mentioned John Braun. He wrote mm-hmm. about gerrymandering over in that Yakima district. Um, they also he also submitted a cartoon with it this week. I don't know who drew it, but it's the it's the Hispanic representative being booted out by a judge, uh-huh. black and white, very very dynamic, provocative. His his going. last column had a comment about uh, everybody remembers when Bob Ferguson sent out the chicken checks. Mm-hmm. The not. one you got and I didn't? He did, yeah. Ooh. And his comment... His they com- also sent one to Rep. Jim Walsh's dead wife. Uh-huh. Not a great look. I mean... It's not <laughs> a great look. <laughs> the one person that has a <laughs> platform to, like, de- definitely... I, I still could Do not you, believe that. But Braun's comment was like, hey, they sent these checks out to people, and wouldn't you know it, most of them were voters. And it's like, well... Yeah, most people are registered voters. So your cynicism does not reach to a Democratic... like. So you don't think, for instance, the new uh, electricity rebate that Republicans were asking for during the pandemic that is suddenly now available thanks to the CCA? That's mm-hmm. not like... You don't think that's sus? <laughs> like, no, I haven't heard anything about that. So, oh. But I think calling into question, like, and wouldn't you know it, most of them were voting. Like, well, yeah, most people are. Yeah, that's, that's like saying, I went to a bar, and wouldn't you know it, most of the people were it, drinking. It doesn't change his point, which his point is he's running for office, and he's also giving everybody a bunch of free money. Like, uh-huh. Free money. Which is the free same thing money. as the CCA, where it's like, f- suddenly we have enough money to give everyone $250. For that was also the- exactly what Braun advocated when we had like a tax surplus a few years right. ago. Right, and, and they like, wouldn't do it. Why don't we give everybody it. money? And they wouldn't do it. And now somebody does it. Because, like, there's, a, because there's an initiative to <laughs> take like CCA away. And now that there's an initiative, they're like, oh, look, we flipped over this couch cushion, and now we have money to give. Oh, there <laughs> like, he is. Election <laughs> year. What do you know? <laughs> You're just happy because you got your chicken check, and I didn't. How much was I'm the check? Uh, $120. What'd you, you spend it on? Buying I donated, financial I'm gonna, donation. I saved it, and now I'm going to donate it to the Lewis County Maternity House. How do you feel about that? You didn't. I think you you're probably full of shit. more bad chicken. <laughs> I'm pulling bad it up chicken. right now. <laughs> you reinvested it into... <laughs> <laughs> I did. I bought more bad tuna. <laughs> 
I was like, Price do, you, do, you, do you know how much rotten chicken I can get for this money? I'm about to turn this $80 into $160. <laughs> Hand get food poisoning. And if you've got food poisoning and need a nice, cool place to relax, what do you want over your head? You want a roof that was, that was lazy. I, did you have a better option? No, I didn't. I thought that was an AmeriCool plug. So critical today. <laughs> Visit theroofdoctor.com to learn more about all the services offered by one of our favorite sponsors, The Roof Doctor. They ask, is your roof under the weather? They've got a virtual assistant. Just put this virtual assistant to work. Let's see, How many roofing companies do you think got AI on their website already? Just The Roof Doctor, man. They're ahead of the curb. They are. It's already asking me what brings you to our site today. And I said free estimates. And guess what? They provide free estimates. What type of services are you interested in? Solar. Oh, hey, yeah, I bought it. It's, it's taking its time. There you go. Wants wants to know what specifically I'm looking for. I'm in over my head. I can't confirm Get Aaron is conversing with the Roof Doctor website. Robot. If you want to contact the Roof Doctor, and maybe you don't want to talk to an AI assistant or the internet, give them a call at 360-736-0246. They provide all kinds of services for your roof, including solar. People's Champion of the Week? Thoughts? Sorry, Chronicle staff are sending me pictures of the creature from the China Creek that has been capturing our hearts and minds all day today. What, what Do we know what it is? We think it's a muskrat. I grabbed it's Cody and made him come out and take photos of it. Well, we don't know. We haven't seen the so tail. We, we looked at the photos and we compared to one of those like uh, draw, hand-drawn pictures of a muskrat that you'd see in a science book that has the little lines pointing to all the parts. And I uh-huh. think... I matched all the parts pretty much spot on. I would put a lot of money on the fact that it's a muskrat. I think so too, but we don't know that it's not a baby nutria until we see the tail. So I also you, looked up nutria. No, and guess what? I was they don't look the looking same. over your shoulder. Yeah, I know. So I don't know why you're, you're saying it could be a nutria because it's clearly not. I'm not. I'm not ready to just declare muskrat at this point. There's some sort of. There's two of them in there that we've spotted so far. It's a muskrat, so, my man. You're in denial. Yeah, I think it's a muskrat. I'm pretty sure it's a muskrat, but we don't know. Anyways, people champion of the week, the muskrat. Are we going to throw that up on the socials and let the people decide? I already did. It's scheduled. It'll go up later. All right. Well, anyway, my people's champion of the week is not a muskrat. It's Jonathan McMillan and Nathan Evander for opening a shoe store. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Uh, Jonathan is a PL grad, but I knew him from Centralia College. He went to Centralia College around the same time as me. He played on the basketball team, and then he coached for like 10 years. Yeah, he was uh, on the coaching staff there. He's been around for a long time. He he's like if you look if you've been around since Charlie College, you know Jonathan. Everybody knows Jonathan. Mm-hmm. I don't. Really? No. It's oh, a damn. sprawling shoe shop too. I don't know what store that was before they moved in there, but it is a big shop. Lots of shoes. Uh, Cody, were you up there for that? No, no, no I was really not. Shot unfortunately, it. I don't know why. Well, you love sneakers. I have a fair amount of sneakers. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I could afford you know, anything. In, you uh, know who has more could. sneakers than you? Jonathan. Mr. Jonathan, I know. You he's were been, guessing that this is all his personal collection that he's just selling? I He has had, like, storage containers full of shoes. Brenna went up there to write the story. She told me that uh, he showed her his favorite pair of shoes, and it's like a $7,000 pair of Kobe's. Wow. Yeah. Pretty crazy. And they're there on display. I don't know if they're for sale, but... I, in that store, everything's for sale. Yeah. Yeah. For, for the right price. I was at a basketball game in Napafine, and Jonathan was there. This is a couple of years ago. And we were just, you know, bullshitting, watching the game. I think I was covering it. And this kid runs up to him. He's like, hey, man, my friends want to know if you can dunk. And I was like, hey, you just asked me that because he's black. And he's like, no. <laughs> Jonathan's like, not anymore. <laughs> Could he at one point? Yeah, he was a phenomenal basketball player. Okay. But anyway, Jonathan, cool guy. I'm sure Nate Evander's cool, too. And happy to see this store is, you know, thriving. In the Capitol Mall, if you want to stop by and visit, or you can stop at soulandstyleshop.com or something like that. Go to the store and you can check it out. Yeah. A lot of shoes I can't afford on there. Do you think they have any of the Nike Air Max Uptempo Pippins that your favorite parade announcers were wearing? Uh, If so, they're probably nicer than the pair that I have. Let me pull up their store here real quick. You can get some... Uh, retro Jordan, Jordan Four Retro Calves for three hundred and sixty-five dollars. Um, Balenciaga. 
All right, we're not. They, they, they didn't buy an ad. Six hundred ninety-five dollars <laughs> for those yeah. bad boys. Calm down, bud. Or Jordan <laughs> yeah. Four Retro University Blues three twenty-five. Those are sold out, though. So you're SOL. Dang. You guys give me a pair of shoes. I'll go up there and do a story. See how high I can trade up. <laughs> Just keep trading <laughs> shoes. I don't think you'd do a great job. I don't think you would win a battle of trading sneakers with McMillan. I took a sales class. Uh, <laughs> the Sirens Banger of the Week. You had uh, something interesting. Uh, well, I don't know if it's interesting or sad, but we did have a report from Shahalis of a woman cleaning her clothes in the splash or spray park. And then a short time later, there was an indecent exposure at the same spray park. A gentleman was washing himself. <laughs> you're going to scare all the business away from the spray <laughs> park, man. <laughs> no one's going to take their kids anymore. Uh, no, I think spray park, great place. Fine. Wonderful place. Yeah, Beautiful. spray park's cool. Those were two that I remembered from Sirens this week. It's a rare occurrence. God, hey, man. what did I just buy? Oh, my Amazon item shipped. Are you going to tell us what it is or what? No. Ooh. Do you want to talk about Shayla's Outfitters? We can talk about Shayla's Outfitters. They currently have a sale running through... S- it's the Get Outdoors sale. It runs through August 7th. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know how every time I'm wearing Carhartt, you guys are like, oh, I bet that was from Shayla's Outfitters. This here shirt was from Shayla's Outfitters, too. Damn. I can tell. This is yeah. a shirt. Can this you believe it? Nice shirt. Looks like something like Jack Bauer would wear. I don't know. Really is that good. a compliment? Or? No, it's not. <laughs> Damn. No, it's not. 30% <laughs> off all outdoor decorations, Aaron. If you want your house to not look like a crap hole anymore, you can stop yeah. by. Also Butane canisters for three ninety five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm frantically flipping through to see if there's any deals on guns, because I know that's what everybody's interested in. I don't Ooh, see Ooh, a pressure canner. Guns. They have mm-hmm. guns. Twenty uh, percent off uh, all in stock sandals. Been looking nice. to get some new sandals. You can check those out. Lots of deals on boots. When was, when was the last time you wore sandals? Never. I've never been a never in my life. I don't. No think. shorts. No sandals. No. Nobody wants to see that. You better tell Owen about the sandal sale. Yeah, Owen will <laughs> go get some new sandals. Yeah, he'll do that. Uh, yeah, lots of deals. Twenty percent off Kuma outdoor gear. Help you there. They had another uh, dog adoption event last Saturday as well. Sweet. You need to get yourself a dog, Aaron. You'd be a little less cold towards the world. Is that where you got your all your uh, pool supplies? Mm, no. I don't They're all 30% so. off if you want to buy a we'll real check pool. Check it out. Well, you, don't, <laughs> you don't even have a pool. <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing. I <laughs> have a river. Uh, all kinds you. of good stuff in there. Check it out. Uh, cnboutfitters.com or you know where the store's at. Just stop by. All right. Facebook comments of the week. On the letter about Captain Freedom single-handedly saving the fair, this commenter says, wait, who's lying here, Elizabeth or Swope? Oh, my money's on both because that's what they do. The reason the meeting was called was to address the issue of mask requirements for the fair. A special meeting had to be called to allow all three commissioners to speak on the issue because one commissioner cannot unilaterally make such a decision. (laughs) The decision was unanimous to not require masks, even though the governor was strongly recommending them at the time. There was discussion on whether or not to have the fair, regardless of that. Mm-hmm. This year? No, this year I think the fair is fine. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's what you think. Like some, you know, you know, I'm not going to mention Aaron's name, I mean, but it's some would like everything to be canceled in perpetuity so that none of us ever get sick ever. But I, they they already took the I would like everything to be canceled in perpetuity. Sickness has nothing to do with it. They already took the demolition derby from us, man. Can't, yeah, that's can't true. Can't lose much more. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could lose the rodeo. There's a tractor pull this year, though, at the fair. Okay, that's, that's a good substitute. There's yeah, a monster cool. truck. Uh, thing, monster truck events, uh, two nights of rodeo. So I won first place in the youth monster truck or <laughs> the youth truck pull. <laughs> oh, the, really? The show, yeah, it's like a little tractor with pedals on it. I won it when I was like three. I have the trophy somewhere. Oh, congratulations. The fair, yeah, they put like weights in a basket behind it. You should try to like go and retain your title. I don't think they have it anymore. Mm. They do. I'll definitely go. If I, if I show up with the old trophy, they'll let you me. You should do a jump the truck against the county's will. <laughs> yeah, if Swope is such a hero, yeah, if Swope is such a hero, why can't we junk? jump your junk anymore? You, we I, all know why you can't, Aaron. Hmm, hmm. I told my cousin Tony about that, and he was completely ready to bring his derby car he has to the fair this year up from Oregon and jump it, and I told him, sorry, man. It's, it was one and done. I'm still laughing at the Summerfest parade when we made a joke about the tr- jump your truck, and that guy walked up and was just like, no, we're not doing that anymore. I got real hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the guy. Was Probably. it the guy that in, the, in the Ranger? I think so. I mean, that's what he said. Oh, so, wow. Uh, yeah. He's got to be a local celebrity. Didn't now. have a, a chance to talk. Yeah, that guy got messed up. Was I was not, there. Not a good time. I was watching from the trailers over by the horse barn. Really? Yeah. You weren't in, oh. under our employee at the time. What were you no, doing No, it was there? like two years ago. I was just there enjoying the fair. like a Just chilling? Local high schooler, yeah. I see. 
see. That was like two years ago, wasn't it? I think so. Was it last year? Lifetime ago. Yeah, honestly. Uh, other comments, lots of people thanking you and criticizing you for making and then editing a post about the woman getting hit by a train. This commenter said they need a bridge for pedestrians there. Interesting take. Yeah, and that was a tough one, too. We had someone hit by a train yesterday. We went and got photos. The, the victim was still on the tracks. There was a sheet completely covering her body. And over the years, we're capturing scenes as they exist. We're not editing them for people unless, you know, if it was really gruesome and, you know, we would not show a person's body or anything like that. But we got a call from family members, and I, I am not so callous as to not listen to that. So, yes, we did take those photos down and put them back up without the sheet over the body and mm -hmm. just some nearby shots. And one last Facebook comments of the week. On the Oregon Trail Days Parade video, this commenter said, whoever is taking this video needs to keep it on the parade, not on the ground. <sighs> you Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> Who names? said that? <laughs> if you have a problem with my live video <laughs> recording while I'm taking a live video with my cell phone and shooting photos with the other hand with a, <laughs> with a, Cody. With a large camera, you can come down to the Chronicle <laughs> office at 321 North Pearl, whatever our address is, and you can take it up with me in person, okay? I would love to hear your... <laughs> Feedback in person. Well, I hope whoever it is is very scary and posing physically and that they show up I to tell you care. what a shit job it was. It was a live video, so I was going throughout the parade live streaming. It was my first time I've ever done that, so there's that. But I usually actually have a little mechanism where I can attach my phone to the top of my camera. It's like mm -hmm. a little attachment, but I didn't have that with me. So I was shooting photos with my right hand. You did with my left fine. Hand. And it was, was okay. okay. And when I had it on the ground, I believe I was trying to maneuver around the Thurston County TV people or whoever it was. So, so you should just jump in front of them next time. <sighs> I don't appreciate it when people criticize my work. I when, it's love, not my, when it's not you, Eric. I love when people complain oh, yeah. about a live video about something. Like, I wish I would have known this was going on. Why? We, we did have an uh, employee in an interview say my shortcoming is that I take constructive visit <laughs> criticism as a tax on me. <laughs> Uh, that's, how yeah. that's how Cody sounds right now. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's what's in the next edition? Oh, we've got lots of stuff, uh, including some stuff from the NVN that I picked up just before I came in here. Thurston County Sheriff Derek Sanders did a interview with Jake Diamond over there at the NVN to talk about the state of the department this far in. He says morale is up. Department Good. has more staff, and the changes in state law have been and very more helpful. helicopters. He doesn't have a helicopter yet. The year is young, and hopefully, he gets one later. Uh, they had a nice story on a kid. They tried to have a birthday party. You've seen this story before, but they tried to have a birthday party for a three-year-old. Nobody showed up. They put out a plea on Facebook, and then everybody showed up, and they had a big, massive party. Kona Ice was there. The local police department, all sorts of stuff. Love to see those stories. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, we have the judge upholding a decision to return 43 adult inmates to the juvenile detention center at Green Hill School. Um, so that's the 43 that were moved to DOC are now going to be moved back, which led to also the arrest of a woman at Green Hill because she called one of those inmates at the DOC to remind him where the hidden compartment was in his water bottle and speak about their relationship. Oh, boy. <laughs> 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 That story's funny. I don't care who you are. Uh, dedication ceremony for the USS Nicholas Mast is happening on Friday over at the Veterans Memorial Museum. Uh, this is the ship that sailed into Japan after Japan quit and um, triumphantly delivered the U.S. troops there, I guess. But a little piece of that's going to be there forever. Mossy Rock Blueberry Festival is happening this weekend. I know you're excited about that, Aaron. Along um, with Antique Fest, also happening this weekend. I, I covered like a pie eating contest to the blueberry festival one year years and years ago they do that they it this year. it's also winlock pickers fest is this weekend mm -hmm. packed weekend shahela's fest was this weekend too shahela's fest that? was last weekend yes. yeah last weekend uh-huh um yeah that's i mean i don't know we did a, a story emily and ridley went over to washington elementary they were doing first person or active shooter, excuse me, not first person shooter, active shooter training. Um, well, well, that they've been doing. You're not wrong. I, it's, yes, I, I misspoke, uh, which I thought was great. And one of the police officers made a really good comment on getting into the schools and how if something, God forbid, ever did happen, it's nice for them to know where everything is at. Um, and then I also found interesting in that story they talked about 
it's very likely that if there were ever a active shooter, that it's going to be one officer running in. And that reminded me of the Uvalde disaster down in Texas where mm-hmm. no one ran in. Where no officers um, ran in, yeah. So it was nice to hear that that's the expectation is if you're the first one there in a situation like that, they want you to go in and end the threat. I thought that was great. I like the, I'm just looking at the front page as well, too, of the website. And there's a the story on Trump endorsing Joe Kent. He's holding his hands up as if he's making quote marks. And I like to imagine what he's saying. What do you think he would be saying when he's holding up? Like, I, I imagine he's going, you know, human rights, something <laughs> like right. that. I, I don't think that's what was happening. And that was from his <laughs> trip to Centralia a few months ago that uh, Ridley shot. Uh, let's see. Do we have anything else? We want to run there. We've got an Alaska girl. Uh Paisley Miles is going to be competing in the Vegas Toughest Junior World Championship Rodeo in December, raising money for cool. that. That was a nice little story. Horse's name is Romeo. Horse's name is Romeo. Did you sh- shoot that one? I did. Was Romeo a good horse? He was a great horse, yeah. Good. Anyways, that's that's long and short of it. There's lots more news, but that should do it. All right, I think we can wrap it up there. In closing, we're sponsored by Summit Funding, Shayla's Outfitters, and The Roof Doctor. Leave a review and rating on Apple Podcasts if you want, or send us an email at chroniclenewsdump at gmail.com.